There's one uh, famous wicked person by the name of Abu Lafia. Years ago, was a famous mumal. He used to be a religious Jew. Then he went off to there in the highest capacity, became a missionary against Jewish people, but not to Christianity. Missionary just against Judaism. He hated Judaism. There's some other Rishayim in the world that uh, are similar to him, but he was in a higher capacity. He would literally go to the government of the Goim and go against these Jewish people to make sure that they arrest people and kill Jews. Literally led to the murder of countless Jews. And he did it for years. After doing it for 10, 20 years, long time, killed a lot of Jews. He was already around 50 years old at this time. And Chachamim say that suddenly one day he got some spark of Kedusha that entered him and wouldn't leave. All of a sudden he had this unbelievable, uncontrollable desire just to do good. And he wanted to do tshuva. He came to the rabbis and he said, listen, I'm really sorry, I want to do tshuva. The rabbis knew his history, knew this guy led to not just violating Shabbat and doing all types of immoral things, led to the murder of countless Jews. They said, go fly, can't get out of here. Tame, you're impure. Impure, you can't, you can't trust such a person. And they're right, that's what Allah is. The guy's a missionary, the guy causes such damage, can't help such a person. Kicked him out. He knew that there's nothing to, uh, he could do in this place. He left the city, went to a different country. Went over there and uh, went to the rabbi over there. He says, listen, I want to do tshuva. I want to do this. I want to be part of the community. So the rabbi starts asking about him. He says, sure, sure, I'll help you. Oh yeah, of course. Baruch this. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And the guy was honest. He says, listen, I made this crime and that crime and this crime and that crime. And this was a big Talmud Chacham. All of a sudden, he becomes weak. He says, I can't help such a person. Get out of here. Out, out. I can't help you. And he kicked him out also. So this Abu Lafia went home and started crying hysterical to HaKadosh Baruch He really wanted to do tshuva, which was unreal. So some type of schut uh, avot, merit of his forefathers, or something happened here, obviously. It was a very unusual story. written in the Sefer. I learned from Rabbi Ephraim. And he wants to do serious tshuva. And he starts crying to HaKadosh Baruch and he says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu every single day for a year straight, Hashem, I'm not looking for you to put me in Gan Eden, give me a reward, get me out of Ganom that I built for myself. I'm not looking for that. All I want is just for you to accept my apology, to accept my tshuva. That's it. Even if you still put me in Ganom, even if I'm never going to see Gan Eden, even if I'm going to continue having a horrible life, as long as I know that eventually you're going to accept my tshuva, that's enough for me. Even if I'm going to go to Gain, no, I'm not going to Gain Eden, no reward for this. It's still, I'll be happy. Mamash got to a very high level, very high level, very unusual. And he did this every day with tears, Mamash tears of blood every single day. After a year passed of doing this, Chacham that rejected him in the city that he was in, he had a brit milah for his grandson. Him and his son both had a dream that night before the brit milah where someone told them, one of the sages came to them and said to them, listen, tomorrow neither you or anyone else that you know are going to be the sandak holding the baby for the brit milah. So who is it going to be? The only person you're allowed to put as a sandak for the brit milah person that as soon as you see that person you'll see a fire a holy fire coming out of their forehead and that's how they both both the father and the son both with tzaddikim had this dream next day is a brit milah and they tell each other oh yeah i had this dream but, oh yeah i had the same dream oh, okay so, so who's the guy so i don't know i thought it was you i thought it was you no they don't know they start looking in the room nothing nothing now as it would happen they invited the entire community to come to the brit milah so this abu lafia got an invitation because they didn't know who he was. They didn't know his name or anything like that. He got an invitation to, uh, you know, that this, this was an event there. Like, not a personal invitation to come to Brit Milah, but there is a, a Brit Milah. The community should come. Okay, so he said, okay, so I'll go. He prayed to Hashem and said, okay, maybe I'll go. Maybe there's something for me to see at least something holy. As soon as he walks into the synagogue, the Rav and his son both see him with 
fire, spiritual fire, that they're the only ones that could see coming out of his forehead. He said, you, 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 come, 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 quickly, quickly. Gotta do Brit Milah. Abu Lafi says, what, what, Brit Milah? Me? What, what do you want me? Come, 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 you're in the sandal. Come sit down. They put him down. He, put, he holds the baby. Brit Milah. Chazak Ubaruch. He has no idea what just happened. And he said, Chazak Ubaruch, thank you for coming. Chazak Ubaruch. He says to them, why, why did you pick me? And they tell him we both had a dream that we have to pick a person that has such a light. He said, well, I don't know about any light of what you're talking about, but do you guys know who I am? He says, no, we don't know who you are. He says, I came to you a year ago. I moved here from that other city because they rejected me over there after I killed so many people. And I came to you a year ago telling you I want to do tshuva. And you told me, no, I can't, can't help you. You're a uh, lost case. So he tells him, so what have you been doing over this last year? And he tells him, Every single day I do whatever mitzvot I can and I cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu non-stop telling him just please accept my tshuva even if you put me in genome and I never, I never go to heaven. And then the two Rabbanim said to him Wow, Shrecha that you've reached such a level that the Gemara in Masichet Brachot says in a place that Baalet tshuva stand even Tzadikim do not get to. You have reached such a level. Shrecha, you are not only a Baal Tshuva, you are the highest level of Baal Tshuva. Obviously, accepting to the Kila, showing how Kadosh Baruch Hu accepts the Tshuva, even though someone could be literally uh, the worst person on planet Earth, to the point where Hashem says, I don't want your Tshuva. This, the Gemara in Masechah Pesachim says, this is the only thing you are not allowed to listen to Hashem on. Meaning that if he says, I don't want you anymore, you still you go, you become a kofir in this regard. It's meaning that you don't listen to Hashem and you do tshuva anyway. And if you do tshuva seriously, eventually Hashem is going to accept you.